let's see. So, okay, so we talked about Kobe and the Macho Man, and you said that WWE and, um, well, AEW, short for All Elite Wrestling, have uh, made you know, tributes to him, and that's great, and I'm happy that they did, um, which now goes into our next topic, wrestling. Oh, yeah, let's go. So, so you said that you grew up with Macho Man and, and, and Hogan and Ted DiBiase and some of those other guys. Yes, I did. Yes, I did, man. I did. I grew up, like... I guess it was, um, I was born in 87, and I, um, I don't know, I've just been watching wrestling probably since I was two. I remember seeing the WrestleMania 5 match between, I don't know if it was, a re, it was the actual match live or if it was the replay of it, but um, it, was Hogan and, it was Hogan and Macho Man. I remember watching that when I was a kid. But yeah. one match I remember vaguely um, paying attention to was Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. Oh, yeah, that one was a classic. Part, first... Oh, yeah, I remember watching that. I remember being heartbroken that Hulk Hogan lost because I was a big Hulkamaniac. I liked Warrior, but I loved Hogan. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, I mean, man. obviously, uh, well, I mean, Hogan, I, I definitely liked him, and Warrior was, he was nice and everything, but... But, I mean, at that time, I wasn't into wrestling yet, so I was still kind of too young at that time. Uh, in fact, I was only, like, two years old at that time, so... Even so, it was just... Oh, man. I don't know what else to say, except that was uh, a great match back then, and... And... Let's see. Um, still holds up pretty well, actually, if you really look back at it. Yeah, because you have two giant men. Yeah, it's like it's not the most tactical match at the end of the day, but still, it's a fun match. It's a fun match to watch. Just the two biggest baby faces in a company just finally going at it, and they built it up the right way too. Stayed away from each other for like the longest time, and then they had the little spend at the Royal Rumble, mm-hmm. and they um just and it led into their WrestleMania. Match and it was title for title too. People oh, yeah. seem to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean that was yeah. that would have been something if Hogan had won and would have been the Intercontinental Champion. But um, the one belt he never got. <laughs> that, that that is kind of funny because you would have thought that Hogan, being the maniac that he is, uh, would have wanted all the belts. I wanted all the belts, I brother. All the belts, brother. I want the, I want the Intercontinental title, brother. Welcome, made this over battle on the Intercontinental title, brother. <laughs> That's not bad, actually. What the um, bully he had, they're probably surprised he didn't ask for it. <laughs> well, I mean, it was more so he wouldn't put anybody else over. Like, like he put over the, the warrior, and that's great, but, it, you know, obviously he it was wasn't. Salt to be... <sighs> Go ahead. Anyway, as you were saying, oh, um, I said that. It it just it was just kind of sour the way that uh, he wouldn't you know help build new stars like Bret Hart and um, like he wouldn't put over Bret Hart or or whoever else would, they were thinking of having him uh, build up like same thing with the Undertaker like like yeah Undertaker did get a win over Hulk Hogan but it was via a screw job and sure. Undertaker survived, and I'm happy that he did, but that was something that could have gone sour for him had it had that happened. Or had it gone awry. Let me tell you something say. about... So, say it again, sorry. Uh, I, no, no, that, that was pretty much all I had to say. Sorry. Okay. No, um, let me tell you something about Hogan with that Warrior match. Um, and he, I think he flat out said this. He... He was really bitter about putting over um, Warrior because he said himself that, like, that from what I heard, he, um, you remember in WrestleMania how they used to have that, used to um, have the thing that carry you to the ring and they'll carry you out, carry you to lose out of the ring or whatever? 
Oh, you mean those uh, little rings? Yeah. I think from what I heard, he wanted to get on there and have him get carried out at the end so that um, everybody can uh, look at him instead of looking at Warrior. And um, I guess when he got in the back, he was like, watch, he's not going to... He told everyone, said, watch, he's not going to make it. And ironically, Bret Hart at the time was on Team Hogan. <laughs> so he was pretty bitter. He didn't want to drop that belt, man. He did it because, I don't know why, I guess because he had to, but, like, he didn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, and that's just kind of, um, that's just the, the start of, well, I don't want to say that's the start, but that's just part of, you know, what makes Hogan a relatively controversial figure. Cause on the one hand, yes, he brought wrestling into the mainstream, but some people would argue that it was McMahon's vision, but you know, and whether this would have happened with or without Hogan for McMahon's company, I don't know. That's a, that's a, what if that we may never know. Well, you know what about McMahon? Like, you can have the vision all you want to, but if you don't have the players for that vision, then it's worthless. It's like a baseball, like a basketball team or a baseball team or a football team. You can have a vision of like having this dynasty, mm-hmm. but let's go for like let's get the New England Patriots, for instance. You can have this vision of a dynasty, but if you don't have Tom Brady and um. Just say, I mean, you don't have twice the first dynasty they had. Let's go Tom Brady, uh, Teddy Bruschi, mm-hmm. Willie McGinnis, um, Troy, what's it, Troy Brown, I think? The, um, yeah, Troy Brown, receiver, Dion Branch, Troy Brown, Dion Branch. Um, they later on got uh, Rodney Harrison. Yes, you don't have those guys, and you don't have. Yeah, if you don't have Bill Belichick, I mean, it doesn't work. It does not have, work. Yeah, it, it's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. And um, I mean, great. Yeah, you could probably deal with somebody else, maybe. But if you don't have, if you don't, what I'm saying is, if you don't have the players for it. Um, then it's. Um, I mean, your vision is worthless. The vision is basically toilet paper. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, yeah, it's and... so. I mean, so yeah. I mean, I can, I could totally see where you're going for when you say that without the players, it it doesn't work. And and I can agree with you on that. I mean, you could have this vision of Hulkamania, but like, and like say, oh, I want to take Hulkamania this direction, but you need Terry Bollea to mm-hmm. make that vision a reality. You need the... It's like writing a script, I guess. Yeah, so it's called, like, you write this, you're a director, or, like, a director or whatever, or a screenwriter. Yeah. You're a, let's go a director. You're a director, you're making this movie, you need the actors for that movie to... to uh, make it... to make it where you want it to be. You need the right people. And Hogan was the right person, but like it just fizzled out at the end. Um, Hogan, oh, sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I say you need the right. Yeah. I say you need the right people, and not the, and like you need the right actors. And Hogan was the right person at the time. He he had what uh, McMahon was looking for, and he had the ability to go out there and and um. Hold the crowd in his hands. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, you give you gotta give credit to Vince McMahon. It was his vision, it was his idea. But I mean, at the end of the day, that doesn't work if you don't have um Hulk Hogan himself. It doesn't work if you don't have um even Macho Man. You need some supporters, you know. Macho Man doesn't work if you don't have him. Because uh, it wasn't all just Hogan. Macho Man, Piper, Ted DiBiase. Oh, P- Piper! How did I Warrior forget about Piper? On. How did I forget Piper? Oh, sweet. Yeah, Piper, like, yeah. like Piper once said when when both he and Hogan were in WCW, if people didn't hate me so much, they wouldn't have loved you. Thank you. Exactly. 
Exactly. You hit the nail on the head. Every great hero needs a great villain. And Hulkamania would probably wouldn't have happened. Wouldn't have been as big if it wasn't for Piper. Because Piper, man, he was a um he was a heat magnet. <laughs> yeah, like I mean I mean what else what else is there to say about you know Piper? I mean Piper was just one of those guys that you just you wanted to see someone beat him up. And I think when I first started like really get sorry, go ahead. And um I mean yeah, you need someone that you you definitely need someone that you want to pay good money to see get beat up. I mean Ted Ted DiBiase kind of falls into that category too, but as you were saying, I'm sorry. Um when I actually started watching though, I think Piper actually was a babyface at that time at at that point. So I never really seen him as a heel per se. But seeing like those videos back, remember he threw that I don't know you saw it when he threw the coconut we hit uh, Jimmy Stick and hit with the coconut. Oh no, I, I I saw it. I mean, sure, I saw the replay of it, but yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, the replay. I only didn't see it live. That was before I was born. <laughs> yeah, of course. But him over the hip. To... Oh yeah. my gosh, that was like, who does that? Piper. <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, I mean, he just gave a bunch of kids a bad idea to throw coconuts at people. Oh gosh, I hope people didn't do that. <laughs> I hope not either. And, and don't even try it, kids. Um, you little jerks yeah, out please there. Please don't do it. I know. But so you say you um, got the rest again to two thousand. Yes. Um, I mean, before that, I would see little snippets here and there, uh, including Jake the Snake Roberts. Uh, that's another guy I, Ooh, I probably forgot about yeah. to mention. Uh, but yeah, by I was then, about him. yeah. But by then, I mean. Jake was not in a good place at that time. He was dealing with, um, sub not substance, but alcohol abuse, and uh, and the fact that he um, not that long ago at that time uh, had gone through an ugly divorce, and and it really wasn't until like probably close to 2013 uh, that he finally turned his life around. But at that time, it was kind of the darkest time of his life. DDP for helping him out, man. DDP should have... I mean, I know he's in the Hall of Fame, but DDP should have gotten the Hall of Fame just for saving Jake Roberts and Scott Hall alone. <laughs> yeah, he probably should have. Uh, I, I don't. I mean, I know that, like you said, he's in the Hall of Fame, but it wouldn't surprise me if he becomes, if not the first, but one of the first... Uh, people to be inducted into all elite wrestling's hall of fame if they ever decide to make one jake roberts and him too i I would i would definitely consider him or tully blanchard or arn anderson to be one of the among the first couple i mean i would think that like probably the first hall of famer would be um uh I don't want to say Cody Rhodes because he. I think he like kind of like he's in charge of the cover. I don't think he's gonna have the ego to put himself in the Hall of Fame like that. <laughs> but I would think definitely Chris Jericho would be on there first. Oh Jericho yes. Jericho and Omega. Oh yes. A champion. <laughs> yes, le champion. I mean, just before the show, I mean, I, I was like looking back at like at, at things like a little bit of the bubbly. Oh man, I miss that. Oh. And then you got the Young Bucks too. They'll be in there first. They'll be like their first ballot, you know. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I, I like the Young Bucks, but maybe not as much as um, some people do. I don't hate them as much as say Jim Cornette does. Um, oh, Jim Cornette, man. <laughs> what do you have to say about him? Oh man, like some of the stuff he says, like. I can understand some of the stuff he says in terms of wrestling, but, like, he does kind of come up as out of touch to me. Like, like you said stuff about the Young Bucks. Oh, they're not. And he just how he doesn't like the Young Bucks and whatnot. And I'm, 
the thing that like really like kind of irked me was um was uh WrestleMania um this year night one when he reviewed Sasha Banks versus um what was, she, uh, what was it? Uh, Bianca Banks Belair. Versus, uh, I can't think. Thank you. Yeah, Bianca Belair. Yes. And like, it was a it was a women's main event for night one, and like, and he got all bitter about it. So, but, oh, it should have been such a such should have been someone else because they're not big names. I'm like, Sasha's a big name. Yeah, Bianca's not as big as Sasha, but Sasha's a pretty big name. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's like. I mean, you you need Sasha to to put to make a bit a new name out there. Exactly. And, and you don't get this very often. You get this once a year. And like, uh, just the stuff he was saying just kind of like rubbed me the wrong. When he said you know, women shouldn't really be in a main event, and he said the Becky one was fine because Becky was super over at the time. But like, uh, it just came off like sexist uh, uh yeah oh yeah. no 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 i, I got a better like, one I'm, I'm sorry misogynist i won't say misogynist per se but like i mean it did come off as pretty kind of sexist a little bit just like you said like just like the um Oh, it's always been made in the main event. It's, that's how it's always been, and this and that. And he just, he just seemed like a little like he just seemed a little um, out of touch. Bitter that there was a there was a woman's main. Event. If you really look at that card, if they had Bobby Lashley and uh, Drew McIntyre last, and of course you had the night two, which was the triple threat main event. You would have had two bad guys going over in the main event in both main events and like No. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. I mean I'm okay with bad guys going over mm-hmm. in the main event, but it, on both nights wouldn't have, it wouldn't have worked. It would have just kinda of, it I don't know, it, it wouldn't have worked. No, I, I get you, uh, especially with uh the fact that uh, <laughs> it, it, it was kind of um, it, I mean, I, I see that they wanted to balance out, you know, the good and the bad and also and not just that, but also to balance out the women and the men, um, especially when it comes to paydays for 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 the for the top names and things like that. And that and that's great. You have to have that. Mm-hmm. And uh, but um but yeah, uh, that's really all I have to say about Cornette. And and while he's and while he is, you know, historically the greatest, one of the greatest managers that have that has ever, you know, come out, and also great producer and things like that. That's all great. But sometimes, like you said, yeah, he kind of does rub me the wrong way as well. Yeah, it's like, man, he's a. Um... And he's a good wrestling mind, too. He has a good wrestling mind. It's just that uh, I think he's kind of out of touch with a lot of stuff. And it's, it, yeah, it's like, come on, dog. Like, I mean, things are changing. Wrestlers are changing. They're more athletic than they used to be. Yeah, you have a lot of smaller people. You have, but they're faster now. And you know what? I agree. There's a lot of matches that don't tell a story, and they should tell a story. And I agree with that. But, like, I mean, I'm also, like, at the end of the day, if I'm entertained, if it, if it's not telling a story, but if I'm entertained, and it's like, you know what? Okay. <laughs> I had fun. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, really, the story of, uh, and, and, and I know that Cornette, uh, and this kind of leads into the next part, I know that Cornette was not a big fan of, what turned out to be sta- Stadium Stampede 1. <laughs> oh, boy. And he he pretty much was like, if this is what it's come down to, I am not watching this shit again. His words, not mine. Damn. Was it the, about the one that came in, what, 20, 
uh, the the first one that happened, not the recent one. Yeah, the original. Um, so, okay. and that kind of leads into when you said that you know they should focus on stories, and they and most of the time they do. Does uh, AEW, and is it perfect? No, it's it's never going to be perfect. But but what I loved about Stadium Stamp, I honestly I be, I really loved Stadium Stampede two better than one and while one was great um two had a great story to to back it up and that was the you know the stipulation you know what i don't i have kind of been like off and on on aew a little bit i've just been like oh i've been so busy so it's like i've missed a lot i have a everything on my dvr i just haven't had the time to watch it because i've been so busy with other stuff but I know it was the um, Pinnacle versus um, uh, damn it, I can't think of their names uh, versus uh, the Inner Circle. Yes, I know that, and like I know the Inner Circle won, which was great because the Pinnacle won their uh, won that cage match because they're one and one right now. Right, right. Um, I mean, the stipulation was I I don't know if I should spoil it to you, but. I mean, now that it's over, I probably can't. All right, no, well, it's okay. Just spoil it to me. It's okay. Yeah, well, the the stipulation was that if Inner Circle lost, then they would have to disband. So oh, just okay. so just the fact that the stakes were raised to that level, to the to the point where, in your heart, you're you're in the in your mind, you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be the end, but in your heart, you just want it. You you want. Uh, the inner circle to to find a way to win this and and stay together and like when I like especially when it got to the end of the the match after Sammy got hit Sammy Guevara got hit in the head with a chair I was like oh no this is gonna happen then he kicks out and I'm like what <laughs> I, I I almost felt like I was about to have a heart attack or something and and yet this didn't affect me personally but but that's how invested I was in that match. Nice. Oh. I need to watch it, man. It's just... I wish they had something like um, WWE Network where I could just watch, you know, past stuff I missed. And they oh, don't. yeah. Yeah, like... But, like... I mean, of course we know that they're not exactly rich enough to... Or they don't have... Oh, yeah. Like, they don't have WWE money to where you can make... Something like that. All they have is, um, well, I mean, it's only available in America. So if you live outside, then don't bother trying to find it because you won't find it. But it was BleacherReport.com, I think it was called. But that's um, that's okay. the name of the that's the name of the streaming service that you can buy your pay per views off of. But you probably already know that. Yeah. I was gonna buy their last pay per view, the one with the um, exploding barbed wire. I kind of like, um, I said no at the last minute, and I think I kind of dodged a bullet because that barbed wire match was. <laughs> oh my gosh, that did dink. You well, know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, like some people said that the match itself was okay, but well, not. I don't want to say it was okay. It was very good, but it wasn't like great, and it didn't live up to the expectation of um it didn't live up to the the previous uh uh unsanctioned match that uh, moxley and omega had at uh full gear 2019 like it didn't match that intensity because if it had i'm pretty sure it would have been as memorable but it was the ending of it that yeah it was it was bad it was bad yeah <laughs> that was hilarious though <laughs> Poor Eddie Kingston had to sell that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that, like, you know what? I'm happy that Eddie was able to, you know, talk himself out of that. I'm like, yeah, I, I probably would have, I probably would have fainted too if I thought I was gonna die. Yeah. Seriously. That's good. That, that's the signs of a good talker. He could talk himself out of a shitty situation. Oh yeah, definitely. And, uh, oh man, it's just... but uh, some of the more memorable moments include when I saw Sting 
You're talking about um, when he debuted in you're about, AEW. Uh, in his last pay per view. No, huh? not not no no not not just when he. Uh, I mean, his last pay per view was great, but I'm talking about when Sting made his first appearance in All Elite Wrestling. I did not see this coming, honestly, and I was like, uh, "What?" No fall and everything. I'm like, Snowfall, yeah, that was nice. I, I, to me, I honestly thought that he he really was done. I think that was a WWE ploy, trying to say like, "Oh, he can't wrestle." I think they got scared when he got hurt. So I thought he was done too. Got their is that all something wrong with the spine? It's decaying, it's um, degrading, or something like that. He can't wrestle anymore. This and that. So I thought he was done. I really thought his last match was against Seth Rollins. And then, shoot, lo and behold, a few years later, here he comes in AEW. I was like, okay. I mean, the, the, the last match that he had, yes, that was one that really picked up the show, especially towards the home stretch between that, the. Omega Pac uh, Cassidy match. I don't know. Like, what was your favorite match of the last pay per view? If you even did see it, I don't know if you did. I didn't see it, but uh, I oh. really wanted to see the. Um, I really want to see the triple threat, though. I and I want to see Stadium Stamp- Stampede too because uh, this looks fun. I saw a little bit of Stadium Stampede actually. It just looks like a fun match to watch, though. Yeah, I love those. Uh... Um, It's just, I need to, uh, that's all, I have a lot of catching up to do. I didn't watch my first full episode of AEW till like, it was like um, earlier this year or something like that. I remember I posted about this. I finally watched AEW for the first time, and it was great. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like about it. And, um, I mean, I, I also have another friend. And uh, who was my last guest, of course, was El Meister. I'm pretty sure you, you've talked with El Meister. And actually, that's another good segue to go to. Uh, what are your thoughts on the man known as El Meister? I can't really say much. He seems like a good guy. I haven't really talked much about him. He's a diehard AEW fan, I can tell, though, because on your Discord, I was saying something about AEW. I said something about. Um, See, it was something about um, it was a uh, WWE thing I said, and um, he um, um, no, I asked about the uh, recent Raw releases, and oh yes, and how and he, he thought said something. Like, oh, sorry. And I guess he said that he, um, um, uh, he said WWE is a failure and said, he said Monday Night Raw is like the Disney Channel now. And it's like, you know what? Yep, you're right. <laughs> oh, yeah. He did say that. Um, <laughs> and, you know, because he, cause, and here's what he said, and I quote, this is a disaster. And I'm trying to use his voice, by the way, but I can't do it. Shit. Anyway, um, <laughs> but 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 then uh, somewhere along the line, um, especially in my funhouse, uh, which is the server that I have, uh, someone brought up the NWO, and and then you guys started talking about like what was going on with uh, well WCW or World Championship Wrestling as it was known at that time, and I only got to see the tail end of it. Like we're talking like the late. 2000s or or the late 2000 the the late the latter part of the year 2000 excuse me going into 2001 and and i could see wow this is a very piss poor show the about uh, wcw yeah yeah it was um pretty um funny because i never really watched wcw that much i did do some of the channel flipping at the time Let's see what Dipsy Davy talking about, and I just see Ric Flair going woo the whole time in the uh, on the uh, on, in the ring. And I just see some <laughs> like, yeah, that's what we do. We just kind of usually I turn on there as Ric Flair cutting a promo, and 
just wooing the whole time. And like, I would see Booker T. I was like, man, that Booker T guy looks pretty cool. I'd love to see him at WWE. And lo and behold, that happened eventually. And yeah. but like it was him. I used to see uh Goldberg. I didn't even know who the heck Goldberg was until uh, yeah. my cousin. My cousin talked about um uh, was um he was a big WCW fan, and then he kind of kind he kind of switched over to WWF eventually. <laughs> yeah, because I mean said, I don't I don't blame him really because like as as it was getting closer to its death, it, it just was. Like it was kind of a, a a a classic case of too little, too late. I mean, they had some great ideas towards the end, but they never got to finish them out. At that time, I remember. Yeah, Elmas actually said, you know, part of the problem was Vince Russo, and yeah, <laughs> no argument here. No argument either. I mean, I could argue that it started with Jim Hurd in '91. Um, and while he didn't kill the promotion, it was just the fact that uh, Jim wanted to make WCW an assats an assats version or a, a pale imitation of. Well, I'm pretty sure he wanted to be a better imitation of um, the World Wrestling Federation. Or well, you w- know what? It goes yeah. back. Yeah. It goes back to I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Um. What, what was that? You were it goes say? back to what I. I'm oh, sorry. No, it goes back to what I said uh, before about having the players. And you know what? They have players, too, to be fair. But it's like, I guess it's the reverse, though. The problem is the man with the vision, I guess, if you think about this. His vision. I mean, first of all, you can't copy. I mean, people are not going to watch the exact same thing on a... If it's like having two of the exact same movies come out to come out, like why? <laughs> it's it's a dumb idea, especially. Yeah. I mean, you have this movie. It's like say they're like. Here you go. You have the Avengers. That movie comes out. People watch it and they love it. And then you have, um, oh, what's my call it? I I, uh, I, got go with, I got one. Uh, I got one. The Scavengers. What's that? Exactly. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's say you have the scavengers. Here you go. That comes out, and it's the exact same thing as the Avengers, but with less money. And <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely shitty. And they, uh, yeah, and a shitty director and whatnot. So, wh- what are you gonna watch? I'll take the Avengers. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's like, come on now. <laughs> the thing about it too is that um, WCW NWA at the time, the NWA at the time, they had a um, their stuff was like kind of like more. Um, I want to say adult oriented, but it was more. It was a little more mature at the time. They had blood, you know. The um, storylines were more mature, or whatnot. Yeah, and just, their wrestling was a little bit more technical too. I guess you could argue that their rest they they had better matches. Yeah, they did. They had better and, matches, um, and, and uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. But, but um, their um, just Jim Hurd sucked, you know. But then, like in the nineties, and like in the mid nineties, for about ninety six. WCW actually ended up becoming number one in America. It took over WWF. And I'm sure you know that. And part yeah. of because the NWO and the, and um, another part of that was the um, wrestlers. They had Chris Jericho. You had uh, Malenko, Guerrero, Benoit, Mysterio, um, Juventud. Um, just a lot of like great high flyers, these technical wrestlers, they put on these great matches and you had that and then you had the NWO and you had these mature storylines that people thought like you look at the NWO and it's like that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> I'm, absolutely. Like, the, the stuff was like, yeah. And it's like, I remember 
I remember when um, Hogan, around the time Hogan first turned heel, and um, it was the uh, they were like it was him, Hall, Nash, a bunch of other NWO guys are kind of like messing up the that and whatever, and it's like, and they like introduced Virgil, I think, as the next member, and I'm like watching this, I'm like, and then Hogan's all laying on the announcer desk and posing and all this other crazy stuff, and I'm thinking like. They're not supposed to do this. They're going to get in trouble. What's, what's, what's going on? I was kind of intimidated by it. I was a little kid at the time, too. So it's like, I was like nine years old. I was like kind of intimidated, though. It was crazy. I mean, but I probably would be intimidated, too, if I had to deal with. I mean, to try to deal with Hogan is bad enough, but I mean, to try to deal with all of his cronies, I'm like, come on, man. How is anybody supposed Hogan to Hogan or win? just Hogan's ego? Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking in kayfabe. You do terms, a Hogan or just. Yeah, <laughs> but I think in real life is is ego in real life. <laughs> I mean, I I could have used another metaphor to describe uh, Hogan's ego, but I'm probably not going to go there. It's too big for its own good. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> mm. And yet, yeah. you wanted it to be enlarged, I guess. But I'm gonna leave that at that. Yeah. But, but um, yeah. But but to El Meister's point, yeah, when Vince got when Vince Russo, excuse me, um, like e- even before he got there, it was it was kind of starting to you know go off the rails a little bit. But we all know what happened. Yep. But you also got to give credit to WWF. They had the um, again they had the players. You had Stone Cold Steve Austin. You had the right. You had the two top baby faces. Yeah, the two biggest wrestlers ever, at the same time, in the same company. Oh man, it's like yeah. having, it's like having Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson, or Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, on the same team. God, I don't think anybody could beat that team. If if you actually nope. put that together, but. Nope. I think it's still... Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, sorry. I mean, I don't know. I, I really can't think of anyone that could beat um, a team like that unless you have um, a team of an assorted cast of characters, like so probably probably some of the other members of the Dream Team or um, or if not a great selection of wrestlers, you know, that are not the two top stars. I mean, unless you have something like that, you really can't compete. Yeah, you can't. It was hard, man. And then like, you know, the Rock came in his own, and Stone Cold was Stone Cold. And then you had Triple H come, but you had DX, mm-hmm. you know, which is like their own NWO. But like, there were baby faces. They were, they weren't too big for their own good. They were just, they were perfect, you know. And then you had the Undertaker, who was still there. The old the. The, the big dog, the original big dog, <laughs> the guard the yard, of course. Oh, you had, yeah. um, and of course you had you had the taxi division, you had the Dudleys, you had the Hardy Boys, you had Edge Christian, man, yeah. you had the Acolytes. Yeah, you had and then a commentary. Guys. Oh, oh then yeah, a commentary. You had. Go you ahead. Had, you had Jr. and the King. Of course. Yeah, the greatest commentator of all time, and one of the best heel commentators ever. You know, just man, that's always been my favorite commentary group. People love Monsoon and uh, Gorilla Monsoon and uh, uh, Bobby Heenan, or yeah. Gorilla Monsoon and um, Jesse Ventura. And, Ventura, and no, rightfully so. Yeah, th- rightfully so. I mean, um, me personally. I guess because I can remember it the most. I love King and Jr. It's hilarious. And plus, they had a little bit more freedom of what they can say too. So I guess I kind of added it to it too. And Jr. just has that voice. Just oh, my... oh. <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, he still got it. It's just I think the only thing that's robbed him is just you know, father. <clears throat> excuse me, father time, but. But I think the one thing that made yeah. it very funny for me was the fact that King had this like, like 
Akeem was just like, how do I put this? Like, even though he was a heel commentator, sometimes he would he he would smell what the Rock was cooking. Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, King loved the Rock. He didn't care. I mean, he'll talk some mess. But he he wouldn't talk mess about the Rock. He'll root for the bad guy. But if the Rock won, he was like, "Yeah, okay, yeah, you know, I'm okay with that." <laughs> and and not only that, I mean, and then of course, let's not forget his uh, the fact that he was obsessed with puppies. Oh my gosh. Let's... Yeah, watching that now, it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like, I'm... So my parents let me watch this. <laughs> yeah, like uh, now, granted, I'm I'm perfectly fine with being a, a heterosexual male. Mm-hmm. Then again, anybody at that time probably would have been, but <laughs> but back to um, <laughs> but yeah, to your point, like if you don't have the players, you don't you can't really compete and. And uh, yeah, WCW kind of did have the opposite problem. They like, especially in '91, but by uh, 2000, they were just they were they didn't have as much players. I mean, they still had Sting and they had Ric Flair and they had some of the old guys, but that was the only problem. They were too old now. Well, another thing is this: the the old guys. Never really put over the young guys. That was one of the major problems. It's always like that people, <clears throat> it's the same guys always win the world title. I mean, Booker T didn't win the world title until 2000. And it was like, what, eight or nine months before the company went under in general? Absolutely. And, and then the only other person, like, new talent, homegrown that won the title was Goldberg. And he only did it once. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, the fact that he was beaten with a cattle prod. Explain that one to me. God. Oh, I'm still trying to forget that. That was so stupid. I wasn't even like a big WCW guy. It was like, that was dumb. You had like the hottest streak. And then you, and you just and, killed him I mean, with a damn That's as bad as... Oh. Yeah, I mean, say what you were about Taker losing the streak. At least it was like, at least it wasn't electrocuted, to, electrocuted and knocked out. <laughs> You just let a guy beat him clean in the ring, fair and square. Yeah, I, I still, still hate that. By the way, <laughs> I do too, because I would have, I would have much rather had. Well, I would have said CM Punk, but then when he left, I'm like, well, that's, I guess it was kind of for the best that he didn't win. But, but some people would have thought, you know, Triple H or Shawn Michaels, or, or even as early as say Randy Orton. Like Undertaker was Randy. What? Yeah, yeah. Even as far back as Randy Orton, two thousand five. Yeah, yeah. I think Randy uh, was actually booked to win it, but he turned it down and said, "Nah, I too much respect." Absolutely. Yeah, too much respect for Taker to do it. That's from what I heard. And like, I think um, Edge was actually. Scheduled to win it, that one scheduled to break it too. When they wrestled at uh, twenty four, mm-hmm. it said hell no. <laughs> well, I mean, of course, I mean, like he, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it had anything to do with him not having the stroke, or if it was just the fact that he respected Undertaker that much to not break it. So, I mean, either way, I, 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 I applaud Edge for you know just being a bit selfless of of that. I think he just, I think it was a respect matter because Edge was the hottest thing on SmackDown at that point. He was SmackDown. SmackDown was his show. Uh, Raw was Cena's show, and uh, SmackDown was Edge's show. And oh. yeah, I, Edge had a lot of respect for Taker, though. Um, and he said, nah, I can't do it, man. And uh, the other one, too, I think was supposed to end it, and he said, no, I can't. Remember. You know what? The funny thing about this, too, is that Brock Lesnar, from what I've heard, Brock Lesnar didn't even want to end it. He said, no, nah, I don't want to do it. And like Vince's like, nope, you're doing it. Oh, Vince made see, up his mind. Wow. Okay. 
Well, I mean, that, that, that kind of just sheds a lot more light on that, but still, it really should not have ended. If not, it should have ended with someone else with that definitely needed the rub. And if someone needed the rub any worse than any of the opponents that he took on after the streak was broken, look no further than Bray Wyatt. I was going to say Bray Wyatt at one point. I think Bray breaking it at 50. If he broke it at 31, I would have been there to see it. <laughs> and I would have been okay with it. <laughs> oh, my God. I was at WrestleMania 31. Are you serious? I was there. Wait. And I had very, very good seats, too. Man. I don't think you're going to ever see me on camera, but, man, I was there. And one of the greatest uh, moments of my life, man. So much fun. It was the first and only time I seen Taker wrestle in person. Yeah, because I got to the, the only time. It or was actually, an honor. I've, Yeah, I've only got to see him twice. Undertaker. Once in a house show in 20, 2000 or 2000. And then the other time was 2001 at Judgment Day, which was at um, which was in Sacramento. And um, of course, oh, you won't... my friend went to that show. I'm gonna cut you off, but my friend went to that show. Are you serious? I was actually supposed to go there, and I yeah, I was gonna go there, but I couldn't because it was a school night. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm like yeah, dude, we 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 could have met each other earlier. Then when we ended up meeting each other, that's crazy. Yeah, we actually met each other in person too. It's been crazy because me and my friend were supposed to go to that show. Show it was me and two other people supposed to go on the show, but I couldn't go, and he could, and my other friend couldn't go, so it was just him by himself. Man, it would have been the uh, it would have been my first ever wrestling show. Wow, but I didn't mean to cut you off. I just like kind of like whoa, a big whoa moment. <laughs> No, I, 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 I get where you're coming from with that. But yeah, as far as Bray, he, he probably needed the rub a lot better. Just given the fact that he... I mean, he would... like Even even now as the feed, he's been very mismanaged. And I'm happy that the fans see through it that it's not his fault. It's just simply the booking let him down. One man's fault. And that's Vinny man. <laughs> Yeah, and El Meister has said that had said that you know it may get better if he retires, but even then, there's still that that stigma that will take years, if not a decade or two, to really wash off. He's absolutely right, but I've always said this: Vince needs to fire, um, what's his name, Bruce Pritchard, and then he needs to look in the mirror. Bruce Pitcher. Fire himself. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Kevin Dunn. Uh, no, fire Kevin Dunn, too, because this camera... This, the whole shaky cam thing is getting ridiculous, man. I'm going to throw up watching ever, this ever, So basically, every time I hit you in the face, it shakes. Boom! Pretty much, yeah. It's like... It's like, Why? <laughs> AEW doesn't do that, and they get their point across just fine. Impact <laughs> doesn't do it either. No. New Japan, Ring of Honor, I mean, shoot, MLW, NWA. Shoot. I mean, you say more? <laughs> I mean, no, no, absolutely not. But but as you talked about some of those promotions, um, yeah, ever since, uh, like, it, it, even in the years leading up to what turned out to be All In, and I, I didn't get to see the show live, but when I saw the replay, uh, to me, that's when I thought, wow, these guys could do it. And, of course, I didn't know at the time that All Elite Wrestling was going to be a thing. And then when I saw it, like, I remember distinctively where I, where I was on January uh, 1st or 2nd or 3rd, I forget exactly the exact date. But I remember uh, early January 2019, they made the announcement, and I'm like, what is this? I'm like, it, I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, because I'm 
I, I'm thinking so many com so many companies have come and gone that tried to fill in the void of WCW, and most of them have had different degrees of success. But this 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 turned out to be legit, man. Man, I remember too when I heard about it. I'm like, I don't know. I was had like a um. I I actually never really had any doubt doubt for them because like I saw the people. I was, Cody Rhodes was like Cody Rhodes was getting pretty big in the indie scene because he had left WWE and he started like. He pretty much became kind of sort of became his own boss a little bit, doing his thing. And I was like, man, I respect the heck out of that. Doing your own thing, bet on yourself and whatnot. But like, I saw that I had a lot of money to back them, and like, I saw that I had Chris Jericho, and like, I didn't really know much of the Young Bucks, and like, same for um, Kenny Omega. I mean, I heard of Kenny Omega, but I never really saw him wrestle. <clears throat> yeah, like but I like, never saw him. The first time I ever saw Kenny Omega wrestle was the very, very, very first show that they ever did, All Elite Wrestling. Yeah, but like I, um, I, I just some told me that I think they're gonna be good. It's gonna work out just fine. You know what? This is actually what WWE needs—a good like slap in the face, whatever. To kind of like, hey, you get your shit together, you know, because. If you don't, they're going to take over. And, like, I think that, um, I think competition is great for wrestling. It's just great in general. Kind of, like, keep oh, you yeah. in the game and always, to always um, not get complacent or whatnot. But, like, when I saw the announcement, I was like, yeah, I think they're going to be good. I, I knew they were going to be good. It's just that, um, um, it's just, uh, I didn't know, like, how long was it going to take for them to, like, I don't know how long was it going to take for them to end up being number one. Oh, because they're not number one yet, but they're going to, they're going to make it eventually. WWE keeps going the same route they're going to, they're going to, and AW's going to take over by far. Yeah. And honestly, I would be more than happy to see them take over. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if that's what it would take. You know, but on the other hand, well, in my eyes, they're number one to me. I mean, they're the better of the two by far. I mean, it's easier to easy to tell. I mean, the only thing that WWE really has is the Roman Reigns storyline. I mean, the, SmackDown's not a bad show. It's an okay show. It's a pretty decent show. They have some good stuff. They have, of course, they have Roman Reigns. You have the Usos. Cesaro, um, Bianca, Bailey, Sasha. Uh, I love Apollo. I love what he's doing right now. You have Kevin Owens. You don't have these stupid storylines. It's not three hours long. Hint, oh, hint. God. <laughs> yeah, that's just you know that's that's one of the that's what was one of the factors that uh, didn't help WCW when they expanded to three hours. Yeah, you think WWE would have got the hint, but I guess not. But that's more so on USA. USA is the one that won in three hours, not um, WWE per se. They just said, oh, "Okay, whatever." I mean, they're getting all that money, so I mean, what are you gonna do? Say no? I, mean, I don't know. I'm like, but then again, you know what? Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, you 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 pretty much said it when you said, you know, if you ever get a lot of money, why would you turn that down? I was gonna say this though too. The fun fact, the funny things. You know how AW's making another show, that yeah. Rampage show. Yeah. That was originally supposed to be a third hour of Dynamite, but Tony Khan had the um, had the brains to be like, no, that's not, that's not a good idea. They said, why don't we take that third hour and just make another show? So that's gonna be their Friday night show, that one hour show. I'm like. Brilliant. <laughs> I know it, it. It the the only bad thing about it is that I mean that's a lot more content to watch and as and don't get me wrong I I love watching the shows, um. But of course we all know how excessive that WWE is so. That's kind of something that they got to be careful of. 
think it's like oh, I think it'll work out. The only problem is it's like right on the same it's on the same night as SmackDown. It's like dang, I actually kinda of like watching SmackDown, so it's like I gotta flip flop. I mean if like it was on Monday, then sh- I mean, you know where I'm gonna be at. I ain't watching Raw. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's it's in the name, it's uncooked. Yeah. I mean, do you want to eat exactly. a, a like raw steak? So do you want to eat a raw steak? Ew, no. My point, raw. my point exactly. Yeah.